Shalom, shalom, shalom. All right, family. I'm not going to be here very, very long. Just want to share something with you guys. So if you're going to come in, come on in, family. Come on in. Come on in. I see the eye, <laughs> which indicates that someone has joined me. And it usually takes a few minutes before everything catches up. Peace and blessings. Good evening to any and all who can join me. Shalom, shalom. Good to see you. Shalom, shalom. Come on in. <clears throat> Excuse me. Shalom, shalom, family. Peace and blessings. I'm saying peace and blessings, but if you look at the... Uh, the title, it, it's kind of, uh, it, it's it's kind of uh, out there, huh? Wouldn't you say? I would say it is. Shalom, shalom, everyone. Come on in. Oh, happy birthday. Happy, happy born day to you, Eve New Beginnings. I uh, pray that uh, the rest of your day will be beautiful. Come on in, come on in, come on in. I just want to quickly, I'm not going to keep you guys. I know I say that all of the time, but tonight I'm really not going to keep you. Um, I just want to share something that uh, was stirred up in my spirit today, okay? Um, so I just want to share that with you guys, what was stirred up in my spirit. You know, it's 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 interesting because, um, you know, spiritual stuff doesn't always happen. Um, what, uh, you know, uh, what is the word that I want to use when it when it's something that happened uh, in time? One thing happening after another after another, and they're always in in the right sequence. So you have one, two, three, four, five. I forget what that term is, but anyhow. Um, messages don't always happen that way. <laughs> they, they don't always happen in the order that you're, you're expecting them to, to, uh, occur in. So it's kind of interesting that, um, in my spirit today, the, there were several words that kept coming up and they came up together as a package. And it's as though, uh, we have skipped completely over dealing with the Civil War family. I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> I know that that's something that we are we are uh, scheduled for. When that will happen, I don't know, but I do believe that we will uh, experience the Civil War. And I don't believe that that Civil War will be as most people are expecting it to be. Well, anyways, my, uh, I think it's going to be different. I think it's going to, um, it's going to be, I think um, the Civil War is going to be sparked because of resources being really, really short. And, um, you know, people, when they're desperate, people will do desperate things. And so I know uh, many people are talking um, that civil war is going to be sparked by uh, racial issues. I don't. I don't think that that won't happen. I think that that's going to be included in it as well. But I think what it's going to boil down to is people just not having enough resources. People are going to be hungry. They're going to be angry. They're going to be uh, looking at um, things that will be taken away from us, if you will. Um, you know, not to mention, like I said, that the resources, shortage of food, shortage of water, um, jobs being um, eliminated. You know, I think it's going to be um, the Civil War will happen because people are just going to get to the point where they're breaking. Just put it that way, where they're breaking. Things aren't functioning the way they expect them to function. And I think that folks are going to begin to lose it. And that's what I think is going to 
uh, spark the civil the civil war between us. But anyhow, I want to talk about the civil war because the message that I uh, have uh, received in my spirit today, believe it or not, if, if I can say this, is worse than the civil war family. It's worse. Okay, it's worse than the civil war. Yes, uh, Sammy, I agree with you. I agree with you. There is so much more going on uh, April 8th. There is so much more. It's not just the eclipse. I agree with you on that. There is a lot that is happening. And uh, old McMoney, I feel you, sis. You say the nerve under your eye has been twitching for the last four days. I went out and got more water and a USB water pump restocked my pantry last week. Yes. Okay. Shalom, shalom, family, and everyone who's come in. Again, I'm not going to keep you. Um, I want to share a message, like I said. And I don't have, um, you know, I, I'm not going to ever give you any dates. I'm just going to put that out there because I don't believe in that. And uh, truth be told, the Heavenly Father has never given me any dates on when to expect something to happen. You know, you get the sense in your spirit that that uh, things aren't quite right. And that, that's what's going on right now. But the message that I got is basically it is uh, family. If I can if I can say it. It is as though um, I am listening to the news, you know, breaking news, breaking news. You know how that goes. Right. So here's the thing. Here's the words. I'm going to give you the words. These are the words. Now imagine a news reporter giving you uh, this information. And these are the words that they're speaking, okay? They're saying things like DEFCON 1, okay? DEFCON 1. Um, they're saying things like, or, you know, the reporter is saying things like unprecedented. Um, this that has happened is unimaginable. The unimaginable has happened. Folks, there's no turning back. There's no turning back, right? So these are the words that that were presented to me, okay? So I, you know, I did a little homework, and I'm like, you know, I'm not the, the I'm not the foremost person as far as when it comes to like military stuff. So I kind of borrowed the uh, title from a, a, a website called Arrow Time Hub. So here's the thing about this DEFCON one. This is said to be the highest level of readiness, which means that the United States is under imminent attack or is in the midst of a large scale military conflict. Conflict. So at DEFCON 1, the military is fully mobilized, as the title says, fully mobilized and prepared for combat operations. And, and what they say is this will in, or it could involve the deployment of nuclear weapons and the military will take all necessary steps to defend against the threat. Now, here's the thing. According to uh, this source and other sources, the United States has never publicly announced or confirmed uh, or, or confirmed that it has been at DEFCON 1. Okay, so it's not something that we've we've seen, folks. It's not something that we have seen. But you can imagine, okay, if we get to that point, all hell is getting ready to break loose. And again, the words that I got were DEFCON 1, unprecedented, uh, the imaginable, unimaginable, I'm, I'm sorry, the unimaginable has happened. And there's no turning back. When we get to the point, family, where those that are in power uh, decide that their only recourse is to hit that button and for us to go to uh, nuclear uh, war, you can you can just say to yourself that uh, things will never, ever be the same again if you are one of those who survives. Okay? 
Yeah, uh, I agree with you on that one. Chris says, um, whenever news media says presidential or unprecedented, that means biblical proportions. Okay. So thank you for that, uh, Chris. So family, um, we've got soldiers. We have soldiers that are here, that are the enemy, if you will. They're just waiting. They're just waiting to be activated. They're just waiting. So again, in my in my spirit, I'm getting these words, and it pretty much means that you know, um, it's an alert family. It's an alert for us to get ourselves together. But repent, repent, and repent again. I'm going to share some scriptures with you before I I head out of here. Again, I, I'm not going to keep you. I told you I wasn't going to. I just wanted to make sure that I could share with you guys uh, this message that was coming through to me. I'm sure some of you have been also experiencing um, a little bit of turmoil turmoil in your spirit, as uh, Old McMoney, uh was uh, mentioning, that that her eye was twitching. Right. And it's it's more than it's more than the April 8th uh, event, if you will, I think that's going on. Uh, these folks are involved in so much as was it Chris or someone else said in the chat. These these guys are there's so much going on that day. Uh, just that day. We're not talking about moving forward. So moving forward, um, when these words are spoken via a news report, breaking news, when these words are spoken, lifestyle that we have come become accustomed to will no longer exist. Things are going to change so drastically for those who survive, for those who are still around, Things are going to change drastically. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready. You know, I'm I'm just like the 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 rest of you guys. I kind of uh gotten to the point where I enjoy a hot bath every now and then, right? Or a, a shower where I can just turn the water on and get the temperature just right. I kind of enjoy that, you know. These are some of the things that, that we've become used to, we've become accustomed to. But when the battle begins, we're going, we're going to lose a lot, a lot, okay? Continue to stock up family. Continue to do that. Continue to make sure that you have, you know, for those of you who are on prescription medicine, find a way. Find a way to stock up on extra if you can. Talk to your doctor if you have to. Find a way, okay, to do that. And then also look for alternative measures that you can take, uh, maybe natural measures that you can take so that you, you can kind of wean yourself off. Now, I'm not giving you any medical advice, that, but so that you can wean yourself off of the prescription stuff when we get to, I was going to say in the event, but it's not a matter of in the event. It is when we get to the point where the countries that we receive or that we get medicine from, um, come, a lot of it is coming from overseas. I don't know if you guys know this. When we go to war, you're not going to have access to that anymore. Some of the first folks that will not make it will be those who are who have medical conditions. A lot of the major medical conditions. You know, I, I I don't like to talk about this or talk like this, but 
this is going to be reality, family. Okay, this is going to be reality. Before we get to the point where DEFCON 1 has been um, announced, before we get to that, that point, I believe there's going to be pockets, pockets that the enemy is going to target first, right here on our soil. And communication will be taken out or it will be little to none, okay? Excuse me, you guys need to, to get used to the idea of this country being a battlefield. I know that there have been many folks who have said that it's impossible uh, for the United States to be um, attacked from within. There are a lot of folks that don't believe that that can happen, but it will happen. It will happen. Whether we want it to or not, it will happen. The soldiers are already here. It's just a matter of time, okay? It's just a matter of a time. And at this point in time, we keep adding fuel to the fire, if you will. We have, this country has aligned ourselves with the devil. Our, our God is a just God. You, you, you have to know that. He's a just God. And he's only going to, what, what is the word or term? Is it blink or wink? He's only going to blink or wink um, so long before he, he, uh, he puts his plan into action. Okay? Nothing goes by him that uh, he won't deal with. He's going to deal with everything that has been going on in the world. And if you look at who we have allied ourselves with, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. You know, um, the, the one particular one that, that we have partnered with, if you will, at this stage is treating the United States as, as if the United States is the, the, how can I put this? The big brother, if you will. Um, let me give you a visual. Let's say that the United States is, is the incredible hawk, let's say, okay? And uh, the, the little brother is going about and causing all kinds of havoc, havoc because they can and because they're looking at Big Brother, the, the Incredible Hawk, to uh, make sure that their tail doesn't get beat, okay? And so the, the little brother is going around antagonizing, if you will, antagonizing the beast and not really going to expect a beatdown, but the beatdown is coming. They have bitten off a little bit more than they can chew. That beatdown is coming. And along with them getting beat down, the beast will turn on us. They've already done it. They are already here. They are just waiting to be activated. And when they do, it's it's not going to be, it's not going to be pretty. We're going to be hit. It, it, we're going to be hit several different ways from several different areas all at the same time. We're not going to have time to catch our breath. That's how bad it's going to be. It's going to be one thing right after the other, but it's not really going to be one thing after the other. They'll be happening all at the same time. As soon as you hear one report, you're going to get another report that's going on at the same time. 
Okay, it's going to happen. And when it does, it's going to be like, boom, 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 boom. And we won't have time to catch our breath. You're going to hear things like, I mean, just, just listen for these words. Unprecedented. Listen for them, okay? You're going to hear this. You're going to hear them say, the, the unimaginable happened. I can't believe. That it's just unimaginable. Folks are going to be in total shock. Total shock. OK. And you're you're going to realize when all of that begins to happen, you're going to realize that it's a done deal. There ain't no going back. There's no turning back. No, no turning back the clock. There won't be. It's done. And at this point, it hasn't even happened. And it's done. I'm telling you, family, it's already done. It's already done. You know what you need to do? I'm just going to lay it on the line. Believe it or don't believe it. I'm going to put this out here. You do with it what you will. What you need to do is repent. What you need to do is to give your life to the Heavenly Father. Give your life to God. You want to survive, whether it's it's on this plane, in the physical here, survive. After all hell breaks loose, if you want to survive during that time frame, you're going to need his protection. You're going to need that cover. That's the physical. But if you want to survive even further than that, your eternal soul, you need to call out to the Heavenly Father. I... Pray that you can hear me. You need to repent. You need to get rid of any garbage that will separate you from the Heavenly Father. This is a warning. Repent. You need to get rid of any baggage that you are carrying that will put a bridge between you, a gap, not a bridge, a gap between you and the Heavenly Father, the, the Messiah, the Savior coming back for us. He won't come back for you. If you are knee deep, deep in sin, you need to repent. This is a warning. This is not to scare anybody at all. If you are a believer, if you trust the Heavenly Father, you don't have anything to be afraid of. Will this stuff happen? Yes. Will it get bad? Yes. Will you have the Heavenly Father to carry you through it? If that's what he so deems to do, yes, he will. But you have to remember something. See, I'm not going to promise you something that I don't have control over. I'm not going to promise you that you might not lose your life during that time frame. I can't promise you that. Because, see, no second, minute, hour has been promised to any of us. It is appointed to all of us to die. Okay? So I'm not going to guarantee that, you know, you give your life to, to the Heavenly Father, that means that he won't take your life. It's his. It's his to take. But what I can tell you is what he has promised us. He's promised us in eternity with him. That I can, I can share with you. He's promised us an eternity with him. But there are some terms that, that, that apply, okay? You can't be out here being wicked. You can't be out here being hateful. You, you can't be out here sinning. You got to get it right. This is a warning. We have a, um, 
a few, not just one. We have a few events that will be happening, not just here in the United States, but it's going to be happening around the world. We have war that is on the horizon. Again, my spirit, I just jump right over the civil war. I believe that we will have a civil war, but the other one that's coming is worse than that. It's worse than the civil war and no war is pretty. So you know that the civil war is not gonna be a pretty one either, but the one that's coming behind that is worse. It's worse. And I'm not sure if during or towards the end of the civil war, if at that point we lose all communication and all the other stuff that's going to happen where it's almost like lights out. I don't know if that's when it's going to happen or if it's going to happen during the time frame when we really get hit and the reporters go on the news and 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 uh there there is the alert goes right the alert goes off and they're saying you know we're at, we've we've been hit family we've been hit so if they get on on the the news to report defcon 1 something major has just happened and my sense is once they get on to tell that it's not that that uh, signal is not going. That's why I was showing in in the um, the uh, video that I was sharing with you guys. It's the 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 signal is, is going to go out. You know, shortly after the, that that announcement is made. Shortly after that announcement is made, um, we're gonna we're gonna lose communication, and some folks will have not even gotten that alert. Some folks, the, the alert they're going to get is the attack. So some areas aren't going to even get the alert. It will just be the attack. And you're going to hear, oh my goodness, you're going to hear, you're going to hear the attack from the, from the sky. You're going to hear the bombs, you're going to hear stuff exploding. And you're not going to believe what you're seeing. You're not going to believe what you're hearing. You won't have time. You know how when when a tornado hits, a tornado goes through, through an area, you know that there's a storm that's going on. And that storm goes through your area. And then shortly afterwards, folks go outside to, to assess the damage. Folks are going to be so in shock that their shock is going to be I'm, I can't believe I'm still standing. Everything else around me is has been devastated, okay? Has been devastated. And I can't believe I'm still standing. And then they go into, where do we go? What do we do? At this point, you know you're not going to be able to rely on uh, the federal government at this point to assist you. Pockets will be hit and those pockets will have to band together. And when I say pockets, I mean smaller groups will have to band together, okay? In order to make it through. In order to make it through. So family, this is a warning. This is a warning. Repent. Repent like you have never repented before. This is a warning, family. This is the time to be fasting and praying. Fasting and praying. This, this 
thing that we're the event April 8th that's coming up. And I know people are, you know, um, people are, are, some people are, are worried about that, but I'm, I'm telling you, don't worry about that. There are all kinds of things that are supposed to happen on that date. Okay. All kinds of things that are supposed to happen on that date. This is why I say, don't worry about that date. What's more concerning is not that date. What's more concerning is your soul. That's where your, your concern should be. Family, repent. Let go of anything at this point that will keep you separated from our Heavenly Father. Let it go. There's all kinds of foolishness that's going on in the world and all of that foolishness. The, the celebrities uh, that are doing this or doing that, that stuff, it's, it's nothing. We, we shouldn't be focused on that. What you should be saying is, is, how is my life right now? I'm not concerned about Diddy because you know what? Diddy's on his own. And these other folks, Beyonce, they're on their own. What's your life like? The father is not playing with us. Again, the words that have come to me have been DEFCON 1. We've never done it uh, according to the resources that, that I have um, checked on. We've never had a DEFCON 1 announced but we will, they will do it, okay? You will hear words like unprecedented. You will hear them say, the unimaginable has happened. You will hear this. And when you hear this, you are going to know for surety that it's done. There will be no turning back. No turning back, family. It's time to get it together. Repent. Repent. That's what time it is. April 8th, before it gets here, we, we got, what, a few more days, right? A few more days. Don't wait till April 8th to decide whether or not you're going to do this or do that as far as getting your lives together. Do it now. Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Repent. Yes, it's a good, good thing because I've been saying it all along to, to make sure that you have your supplies, your resources, your water. Make sure you've got water. Make sure you have food. These are all good things to do. Okay? Make sure that you have whatever it takes for you to protect your family and yourself. Whatever tools, I'm not going to call them out, but you know what I'm talking about. Yes, those are all good things that you need to do. But over all of that, those are all good things. But over all of that, what you need to do, what is most important is for you to get your soul ready to meet your maker. Repent, family. I cannot stress that enough. He's, he's saying repent. Repent. You see death, you see destruction coming. And then is when we want to reach out and cry out to the Father. No, no, I'm telling you to do it now. I'm going to share, and, and I told you I wasn't going to keep you, and I'm not going to keep you. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to share with you um, Psalm 91. This is one of my favorite psalms. And then I'm going to share my second favorite psalm. But I want you, family, to repent, fast, and pray. Repent, fast, and pray. And meditate on these words. Psalm 91. 
whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. I'm reading from the, you know what? I'm not going to read from that one. I'm going to read from the one that I normally read from, and that's King James Version. Uh, Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but family, read it yourself. Meditate on it. Okay, meditate on it. Read it. Read it aloud. Read it and hold it close to your heart. Okay. And again, as I said beforehand, family, tomorrow's not promised to any of us. I think it was Paul that said uh, to, 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 I don't remember the first part of it, but I know the last part of it says to die is gain. What does that mean? And if somebody wants to put that scripture in, because I didn't, I didn't um, highlight that and didn't uh, uh, get that ready. But that pretty much is saying that no matter what goes on, no matter what our lives, uh, you know, what goes on in our lives, how how our lives are going. If I leave this place, this plane, this earth, to be with the heavenly Father, I have gained. A whole lot more than I would be, uh, I would gain staying here on this earth. I look forward to being with the Heavenly Father. So death is not something that I'm afraid of. It's not. Because I understand that he's granted us a, a, a certain amount of time here on this earth. You know, we've been, we we have a, what, what do I call it? Um we have a destiny. We have a purpose that hopefully we all can fulfill while we're here on this earth. Once that purpose has been fulfilled and he calls us home, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. And I know a lot of people don't look at it that way, but I do. That's a blessing. So let me share my second um, favorite uh, psalm with you. And I'm going to read this also in the King James Version. And that's Psalm 23. OK. And that reads like this. Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou wouldst prepare us the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou wouldst anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So be it. So be it. Okay. So family, I am not going to hold you. Like I said, I'm, I'm not going to hold you. But I, I, I hope and I pray that you heed this warning. That if you don't have your life together, and many, so many of us, you know, I walk in repentance on it on a daily basis. So I'm not telling you to do something I don't do. Okay. We talk about... Uh, approaching the throne. We talk about approaching our Heavenly Father, the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega. You know, he's loving, he's kind, he's, he's gentle, he's all of those things, but know this, he's just. He's not going to put up with sin. He's not going to put up with this sin forever. He's not. 
so much is going on in the world. So many folks are hurting. The, 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 those that have gone before us, they're crying out, how long, how long, Father? How long must we wait? And I have to say this, it's not, not pleasant, but it's going to get worse, family, before it gets better. We haven't seen anything yet. In my spirit, I have a taste of what it will be like. It'll make you cry. I have a taste of what it will be like in the future when we don't have what we've become uh, accustomed to. You don't, you won't be able to get on the, on the internet to watch this minister or that minister. It won't be. You won't be able to do it. You won't be able to call ac across the, the country like you can do it today. It will be gone. You won't have the, the, the modern conveniences that you have become accustomed to. You can work for everything that you do. In the times to come, it's not a time for anybody to be lazy. It won't be. You're going to have those folks in that time who are, are going to want to, to um, exercise power over those that are, are less able to defend themselves. Those are the ones that will, be, that will try to be lazy. There will be those who will be cutthroat. It won't be a time for the weak. And I said it before, and I, you know, I'm going to say it again. The first ones that will in, be impacted will be those who have major medical conditions. Okay. The children will be impacted. Those who are weaker will be impacted. Not again for the believers to be worried or fearful because the Heavenly Father will protect those. But don't, don't think that you won't go through some stuff because you will. Your faith will be tested. I'm going to repeat that one. Your faith will be tested. So get ready, family. Get ready. All right. Love you all. I, I'm sorry I did not get a chance to go through the chat to see what people were saying. Uh, forgive me for that. There are times where I really don't have time for this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Family, I love you all. Know that I do. I love you all, but I don't have time. I don't have time and I don't have the energy. I, I just don't. I don't have time and I don't have the energy to, to babysit. Okay, to babysit. I just don't. We need to get it together. I'm not here uh, for the... to do the works of, of you guys that are out there. I'm gonna say it like that. I'm trying to be nice. If you feel, now, like I said, I'm trying, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to upset the apple cart. If you have a message that you feel needs to be brought forth, please do me a favor and use your platform to bring that message forward. Um, please don't expect me to be that messenger for you. I am the messenger of my Heavenly Father. And if I don't catch a message that you've put in the chat, it's not because I devalue you. It's not that at all. Oftentimes things go by so fast, I don't see all of the, the, the comments in the chat. People take a lot of this stuff personal, okay? 
and it's not meant, I'm not doing anything on here when I do these lives. I'm not doing it to offend you. I have a mission. I have a, a, a job to do, if you will. And my job responsibility is not to you. My responsibility, first and foremost, is to the Heavenly Father. That's who I am really concerned about. I don't want to um, disappoint my father. I don't want to disappoint my father. I take his lead. And if that's not what you like, that's on you. That's on you. I'm, I'm going to do the will of the father. Okay? I don't have time. And I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't have time to babysit. I don't have time to babysit your feelings. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just telling you. Some of you guys are over the top with some of your comments. You're just over the top. And you don't understand the, that you don't understand the, the seriousness of where we are and what's going on. When you take things so personal, you 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 don't have an understanding. You don't. And again, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but at this point in time, I don't have time. I just don't have time to be babysitting. Uh, we're we're at a stage right now where things are 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 not on fire, but they're soon to be on fire. I'm more concerned about my soul, and I'm I'm more concerned about the souls of those folks that are out there. Okay, coming back to the Father. And what does that mean to me? That means that I'm going to come on here and do exactly what the father said and tell folks, repent. That's important. Repent. So again, if I missed your comment and you were trying to, to, to you know, convey a message, if I missed your comment, use your platform and put that message out there. Okay. It must not be for me to say. All right. So anyhow, uh, I love you all. I really do. Um, I'm going to just kind of go through and try to glance at. And if the, the Holy Spirit points something out to me, I'll, I'll look at it. If the Holy Spirit doesn't, then I'm sorry. All right. So I'm just kind of, I didn't go very far back because I don't want to keep you guys. Okay. I'm not seeing anything so far. All right. I'm not going to keep you guys. Anyhow, love you all. I do. I do. I do. I do. Love you, but know this. Our Heavenly Father, he loves you so much more. Heed this warning. Hopefully you will hear me. And you will repent because that's what you need to do. Father is very serious about that. Repent. Shalom.